um, it's been some incredible journeys. I'm going to take you on a musical one to start off with and maybe have a little bit of songful breath. This is a, an old Sussex Southern English folk song called Birds in the Spring. One May morning early, I chance for to roam. As I walk through the valleys by the side of a grove, it is there I did hear those charming birds sing. Did you ever hear so sweet? Did you ever hear so sweet? Did you ever hear so sweet as the birds in the spring? As I sat myself down to view all around And the song of the nightingale Why he echoes all around For his notes were so charming His voice so sincere no music nor songster, no music nor songster, no music nor songster can with him compare. So all of you here, these small birds to hear, I'll have you pay attention, now listen, draw near, that when you've grown old, you'll have this to say that we never heard so sweet that we never heard so sweet that we'll never hear so sweet as the birds hear spring <laughs> that's the song birds in the spring from the wonderful sussex family the copper family from rotting dean who've been singing that song and many others of the great shepherding songs and songs of nature adoration for hundreds of years and it really is in some ways a hymn to the music that we are hearing right now across the northern hemisphere with the awakening bird chorus, the dawn chorus, the evening chorus, and the return of many of our migrant species and the awakening of um, the great orchestra of birds. But really that song pays homage to the nightingale who for most traditional singers and most people who have spent time listening to birds, the nightingale really does um, sit as the pinnacle, as the principal bird, as the greatest singer of them all. Um, with one of the greatest ranges of, of, of vocal techniques, of phrases, of sounds, and the audacity to sing much throughout the day is in that song, um, but also most famously, the night song, the night wind from where the nightingale receives his name. And I say him because it is like with all the songbirds, it is the males that are singing that we're listening to. And the nightingale proves to be a really extraordinary species um, that in many ways um, connects, I think, a little bit of so much of the stories that we've heard um, so far this evening with um, stories of grief and stories of 
survival and health and um, our evolution um, and uh, our mental well-being. The Nightingale seems to curiously sit as a as a as a singer to us as a species, as a um, as a teller of our tales, of our griefs, of our melancholies, of our joy, as our, of our tragedies, of our duplicitousness, and a bird that um, has become for generations who've lived in close attunement with the natural world as a teller of our lives and a reflector and a muse for some of the greatest artists and poets and instrumentalists that have ever um, sung and played upon this land. Um, the nightingale exists physically um, across the northern hemisphere. He's a very popular bird. Um, England um, is the most far westerly reach of his domain, extending all the way east into Western Mongolia, Northern India, um, the Stans throughout Europe, Central Europe, um, and um, Spain and Western Europe, and a singer that returns annually from the great migration from Southern uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, the English nightingales basing themselves throughout the winter in Senegal and Guinea-Bissau and Sierra Leone, making the tremendous journey. And these tiny little brown birds have made this journey for many tens, hundreds of thousands of years, perhaps have followed mankind um, on his uh, and her colonization of the world. Um, for they're a bird that is deeply associated with um, human impact on the land. They thrive upon the landscapes that have been, have been touched by human flame and human acts and um, and the, 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 the sort of practices that cause great flourishing of dense thickets and the messiness that uh, we have allowed for grazing animals to colonize and open up within prairies and scrub as um, is, has been very common. And thus the nightingale has sung to us as a species for many thousands of years and may even have worked their way into our um, our sonic evolution, our musical evolution, um, for they are a bird that appear right now as spring is awakening, as the hungry gap is still there closing up, awakening the, the, the re rejuvenation and the resuscitation of the land and our, the filling of our bellies upon the fruits and fats and vegetation of the land. So they are there as a principal clarion call for the um for the return of of life the revival of our land and that impact um has manifested in many many cultures to have embraced the nightingale within their folklore and their folk song and their traditions within their poetry and prose and we see all across the northern hemisphere within every culture a whole raft of uh, names for the bird, identifications and uh, acknowledgements within uh, the song from the oldest of the European um, music, that of the Iperian song and, and ceremony within the Iperus mountains in northern Greece that go back, we can uh, find evidence for over 8,000 years. There within their culture, the nightingale sings constantly in melancholy as a, as a calling of a sense of home, of zenitia, that sense of loss of, of place. Um, and there the bird has been the principal teacher for many of the instrumentalists, the flautists and the clarinetists and the violinists. And indeed the whistle players originally, the scaros playing of the shepherds um, who would play their tunes upon the flutes made of the bones of birds, of condors and of um, vultures, I should say, and, and swans, would learn from the nightingale, would uh, practice their techniques from their extraordinary dexterous um, uh, way with their improvising song, never repeating the same song over and over again, cycling through multiple different phrases, and also their extraordinary ability to improvise with humans, to interact, to take human song and playing and gesture 
and to adapt their own and come into musical correspondence. I kid you not, I do it every night at this time of year. I'm off this very evening in my car to Sussex to bed down in the woods with nightingales in my very secret location um, to start my own singing with them and my own communion for it is an incredible journey into that nighttime landscape under the stars and these extraordinary blossoming nights to hear in the deep silence their um, amazing um, decibelage, 90 decibels in, in their prowess, but also their decoration of silence, which is what marks the Nightingales as such artists with such a human quality to their phrasing, how they utilize the negative space, the silence. And this has been inspired and no doubt impressed itself within the tradition, traditions across Northern, Northern Hemisphere um, to uh, exemplify uh, what true artistry can sound like. It is said in, the, in, in Afghanistan, the master rub rubab players, the, the, the tar instrument that is um, the, the, the national instrument of Afghanistan, that those players who were marked out as being the true masters would have the ability while playing to the nightingales under a fig tree where the nightingales live there um, to lure the birds down to land on their tuning pegs who would then sing along with these players. Um, and so those stories are played over and over again of the inspiration of the bulbul um, or the, the naktigal or the rossignol singing to hearts and poets. Um, and so many stories are there that one can just spend hours and days recounting the incredible journeys and poets and uh, inspiration that has sprung forth. Indeed, in Britain, we have our apocryphal tale, a more modern day one where the Nightingale uh, found himself within the first ever live broadcast on radio, uh, a, a world first, a real pioneering of, of digital technology and, and, and virality, virality of, uh, of, 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 a, of a concept when Beatrice Harrison, the muse to Elgar, played the cello in her garden in Surrey with the Nightingale. Uh, for the first time microphones taken out into the woods and that became a, an international sensation repeated all the way through until the first the second world war in 1944 when uh, the the nightingales were broadcast with the lancaster and wellington bombers flying over to Mannheim for a bombing raid in germany um, and uh, that broadcast was swiftly cancelled closed but the recording still exists as does some of Beatrice's recordings with the birds as testaments to moments where um, this song songster has found his way into popular culture. The tragedy of this is that a bird that has been such a huge inspiration for generations, eras, cultures, um, certainly in the UK, is swiftly coming to an end for we expect the nightingale to fall silent on this island within the next 35 to 40 years at current rates of decline. So the bird is now becoming um, a symbol of the decimation, the dissolving of our environment, the depletion of our na nature, of our species being lost, particularly our birds who are in many ways the canaries in the mind to the, um, the, the great tragedy and treatment that we are, uh, are, are doing unto our own soil. Um, bad farming practices, overpopulation of deer, the insect crash are all contributors to the uh, slow fade out of the nightingale. Um, and so the book that I've written, the stories that I tell of my own experiences, my own journeys, and my intimacy with this bird, spending six weeks a year in close counsel with this uh, this incredible singer um, has shown me what a powerful and healing force nature can be and how much we must fight to save the nightingale, the turtle dove, the cuckoo, um, the mayflies, all the, the spirits, our cousins, our brother creatures uh, and sister creatures that um, we live in, in, uh, in close proximity to what a duty we have to save them for we are and our survival is inextricably bound. We lose the nightingale 
we lose a little bit of ourselves and eventually who knows what then. So um, the nightingale really is a creature worth saving because if you save them, you save um, everything that they depend upon and live in connection with. So um, I will leave you there um, to say thank you for listening. And uh, I hope that some of you, if you have access to go and find a chance this spring to, um, to pay your respects to the nightingale or another species you're close by to, um, maybe International Dawn Chorus Day or Earth Day tomorrow to go and spend some real quality time. Um, and the healing power of nature for birds are one of the greatest uh, balms to our souls and weary spirits, particularly after a winter like one we've just had. So thank you all of you for listening. Thanks to all the other speakers and to Daisy and Rosie and uh, Stephanie and the whole team.